What's up, guys? Alex Kazor from SteelersDepot.com talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers' victory over the Indianapolis Colts. And I know it was a great victory, uh, such an impressive, borderline historical offensive performance, a historical performance by Ben Roethlisberger. But we're going to focus, unfortunately, on one of the negatives today, Cortez Allen, who, of course, got benched in the fourth quarter by Antoine Blake. And I think it comes down to two issues that he has uh, from this game. We're going to examine four different plays that he had uh, through pictures. So no actual really, you know, chalk talk on the whiteboard today. It's all going to be supported by pictures off the coaches tape and broadcast tape. Uh, but he had two issues. Uh, one, being in phase and being in control and understanding where routes break. And I have a friend of mine, my roommate, uh, who's a big Eagles fan. And every single time a cornerback allows a reception, he always yells, look at the ball. And philosophically, I really dis disagree with that because there's a great uh, tweet by Lewis Riddick, and I agree with this wholeheartedly, and I'll put it up now, uh, tweet out uh, earlier this month. And it says, how many deep balls would be prevented in one-on-one -on -one if DBs would stop looking for the ball when they're not in control of the wide receiver? A lot. And he's absolutely right about that. When we talk about being in phase and being in control, we're talking about playing tight to the receiver, playing to the hip of the receiver, and not allowing separation. And I think we get those issues with Cortez Allen uh, on, on a couple different instances, uh, three of the four we'll discuss today uh, from Sunday's game against the Colts. And we're going to start with Akeem Nix 27-yard reception. And we're going to look at our first picture off the ball, and you see that Cortez flips his hips well, and he's playing tight to the receiver, playing to that inside hip. It's a good job so far. Um, he, throughout the game, he actually did a good job in that regard. But you can see he's going to look back for the ball. When he looks back for the ball, he loses being in control, being in phase. And he creates that separation from Hakeem Nix, and Nix ends up making the catch. Now, I know hindsight is 20-20 here, but that's a great ball by Andrew Luck. And there's no way that Allen's going to be able to defend the ball itself. The only thing he can do is, to, is try to play the pocket of the receiver. And when I mean play the pocket, I mean being able to swipe through the hands of the receiver on the catch point, sometimes referred to as splashdown, to try to break up the ball. Um, as you can see, because Cortez plays the ball, whenever Nix makes the catch, there's no way for Allen's inside arm, that left hand, to come down and try to swipe through the ball. And it creates uh, the completion for Hakeem Nix. That was Nix's only catch on six targets today, allowed by Cortez Allen. We're going to go to our next play. It's the Dante Moncrief. Now, this was an incompletion, so you might think of it as a net win, and, but this is tough to see. But I think, again, we're getting the same issue with Cortez Allen, not being in phase, not being in control. Again, this is really tough to see. I tried to find any angle I could to really support this well, so you might have to trust me a little bit. I will have a picture uh, here in a moment. But I think, again, him looking back at the ball. So for the first picture, Cortez off the line. Not a bad job playing to the hip, not getting beat off the line. Here, I think, is whenever he looks back to the, pulp, the ball, trying to peek in the backfield a little bit. And as you see in this next, next clip, it's going to create a little bit of separation. And when you talk about Dante Moncrief, a rookie wide receiver who ran a 4-4 flat at the combine, a little bit of separation is all he needs. And it's going to create the separation. And Moncrief probably should have come down with this one. It really looks like it's more of a drop on him than it is good recovery uh, by Cortez Allen. The third one, we're going to switch gears. We're going to go to our second point, understanding where routes break. Uh, Matt Bowen, who's always done a tremendous job, uh, has talked about this all the time. And I, I tweeted at him the other day just to, to double, double check with him. And uh, he had said that, you know, routes will break at 12 to 15 yards outside of the three-step game. Every single route will break at 12 to 15 yards. And then double, move, double moves excuse me, will occur at 8 to 10. And this is what we're going to get here on T.Y. Hilton's 28-yard touchdown. Uh, we're going to look at the, the snap here. The ball's at the 28-yard line of the Steelers. And then we're going to watch Hilton run a slant and go. Now watch where this route breaks. Watch where Hilton starts to chop his feet. He starts to chop at the 18-yard line. That's 10 yards right in that range where Bowen set of where double moves occur. And then Allen bites, takes a step up, and Hilton stems vertical and ends up burning Allen. And as soon as Allen stepped up, there's no chance uh, for, TY, for, for Allen to, to recover and make a play on the ball. So it's understanding where routes break. You see a receiver chop his feet at 10 yards, alert for a double move. And so you want to stay in your pedal. You don't want to break on the ball. And, and be able to protect should there be a double move. And that's exactly what happens here. So that's the big point of the second issue that Cortez Allen had, understanding where routes break. Go to our fourth one now. It's going to be the Dante Moncrief 31-yard touchdown uh, in the fourth quarter. And you're going to get the same issue going back to our first point, being in phase, being in control. Uh, you're going to see it here. Cortez trying to look back to the ball, uh, creates that separation again. And you get an execution issue here as well. This is very simple, uh, just mistimes his jump. And really, doesn't jump at all either. You can watch 
uh, the picture here of Moncrief jumping over Allen. Uh, Allen's barely off the ground. Moncrief has a 39 and a half inch vertical for Allen. In that situation, when you talk about a jump ball, a go get a ball, you got to compete. You got to get in the air to make a play on the ball. So I think those were the two main issues for Cortez Allen, being in phase, being in control, and understanding where routes break. Will he be able to fix that? I hope. I know the kid's skill set is very, very strong, and he was a great athlete. I think everything is there physically. I think mentally, though, there's a lot of mistakes that have to be corrected. Hopefully he can do so and help the Pittsburgh Steelers in the second half of the season. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, check out my stuff. Check out Dave and Matthew's stuff, as always. As we get you ready for the big Sunday night game against the Baltimore Ravens this Sunday on SteelersDepot.com.